Hi everybody, how are you doing? Welcome back to our book club. We are reading this book, as you know, uh, The 40 Secrets. However, I know there, there are some boys watching as well. And congratulations, because it will help you understand women better and also what you should be looking for and should be looking out for. Okay, well done. You can also invite your other friends to watch these videos, okay? This is not just for the girls, all right? Anyways, welcome back, like I said, and today we're going to read secret number three. Listen, let me say this to you. Try to be as close as I can to the camera. Look, if you were to remember one chapter, one secret from the whole book, this would be the one, okay? I want you to really pay attention and really try to understand. And remember, we have our email where you can send your questions, all right? Totally anonymous. You know, we are not going to be reading your name in any of the programs. We will just reply to you. We, we are here to help, really, okay? So please focus on this secret. Is this the base, is the foundation of everything else that you will learn here, okay? So the name of the secret is the first husband. What do you mean by the first husband? You know, I have two husbands. I'm married to, to my husband, James. But before I married him, I was already married. I'll explain. It's called the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is my first husband. He's the one that when I came to the church for the first time, back, back in the day, he delivered me from depression, from all the anxiety, all these things that I was going through. He set me free. And then I learned in the church, like you also learn, seek the Holy Spirit, focus on receiving him. And then one day I received the Holy Spirit. He's my first husband. And how, how does that help me in my love life? So if I am married, how will the Holy Spirit, my first husband, be so important? First of all, people who are close to me, they know, because I usually talk about this. First thing in the morning, what do I do as soon as I open my eyes? I am there with my husband. We wake up together before I say, good morning to him before I say I love you I say it to God first because there is nothing no one that can match the Holy Spirit listen when I was going through depression when I was going through anxiety and all these things all this this unhappiness that I felt as a teenager I came from a big family and yes, every family has problems. But we, I had uh, lots of siblings, mom and dad, but I still felt alone. I still felt hopeless and all those negative thoughts and emotions that I had. And nothing, no one could take that away from me. Guess who did? God, the Holy Spirit. So how can I not give him all the glory and put him in first place in my life? Think with me. So in order for you to be absolutely happy in your love life, you need to marry God, Jesus, Jesus Christ before anything else. And maybe you think, well, I've heard this before. You know, sounds cliche, sounds religious. Hear me out. I'll tell you, I'll give you some practical examples as to how He's so important in our life. So like I said, as a married woman, how is that important? Before anything else in the morning, I say, thank you, my Lord, for another day. Thank you for the night that I, I just had. I could sleep the whole night peacefully because I couldn't many times before, before I came to God. So I say thank you to Him. Also, something else that he does in your marriage, obviously we could be listing many, many things, but I'll just point, a, point out a few things. Another thing, if it's not good for me, it's not going to be good for my husband. So 
if I am upset about something, if I'm going through something, that I heard someone, maybe someone criticized me, maybe someone said something to me that hurt my feelings. Why will I go to my husband and say, oh, you know, this, this and that, someone said this, this and that. If I am having trouble overcoming what I heard, and I am praying, my God, help me to forgive this person. My God, help me to have good eyes. Do I really want my second husband, let's call him, second husband. Do I really want him to struggle the same way I am struggling, if that's the case, for example? Do you understand? So the Holy Spirit, He guides you to happiness, to peace. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you will want to always gossip with your husband. Oh, you know what she said, what he said, what he, what she did, blah, blah, blah. And he will have evil eyes because of you. A wife from God is a helper. And remember, the Holy Spirit is called a helper to, to us. Remember that. So what kind of helper can I be if I only have one husband? If I, if I put my husband, the one I married, on a pedestal? No, 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 no. The one on a pedestal is my Lord Jesus, my Savior, my everything. So he guides me to, for example, if I am annoyed with my husband about something, I, the Holy Spirit will guide me, Elena, be patient. He was having a bad day. Don't get tired of doing good. So there I go, cook him a nice meal or do something nice for him. Do you understand? Look after his clothes with joy because I do it first of all for my first husband, the one and only. Are you understanding what I mean? And something else when you are married, when you have God in the middle, right there, in your relationship, then you will not have problems with betrayal. Because if I have God in my life, in number one, if he's number one in my life and the same goes for my husband, remember, I need to look for someone who also has the Holy Spirit. So I know that before he even thinks or considers to do something wrong, he will Always think, no, 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 this is not going to please my God. And this begins right there inside of you with a thought. Oh, no, no, I'm not going to think this because the Holy Spirit will not be pleased. When I say Holy Spirit is God, is the Lord Jesus, because the three are one. All right. So before we do anything, we always think, is this going to please God? So... We don't betray a person who, who is truly, truly baptized with the Holy Spirit. She does not betray her partner. Never. Okay? So that's another tip here for you to do with marriage. Okay? How does me having my first husband helps me in my marriage? Now let's talk about the singles. Okay? How can you... Because I know there's a lot of pressure out there, right? People are starting to date at a younger age. Every year that goes by, I mean, soon they will be, what, dating at 10 years old? Do you understand? We cannot be like the world out there. We need to respect the faces of life. I'm a child. I'm a teenager. I'm a preteen. I'm a teenager. It's time to study. It's time to focus on what I want to do with my life. You know, same thing. You are a teen, you come to the church, or maybe you are an older young person, right? You are in your late 20s. But you are thinking about love life. And, and I, I understand it's right at that age. But if you do not have the Holy Spirit yet, pause. Put everything on hold. Because... If you don't have the Holy Spirit, if you don't marry God first, your judgment will be compromised. And that's when we see 
uh, young girls saying, oh, but he's so handsome. He's, you know, he's really good and blah, blah, blah. So they go by emotion. They get married even in the church. Even in the church, which is a shame to the name of God. How can you have a bad marriage when you are in the church? This happens because the Holy Spirit wasn't there. So maybe you are like listening to what I'm saying and you think, well, I feel judged. I feel judged. No. Whatever judgment you feel comes from yourself, not from what I'm saying. Because I tell you something, many of the couples that have marriage problems that we talk to, you know, because we also hold the seminar, the Love Life Se Seminar every Thursday, many of them, especially when I talk to the ladies separately, I always ask, but didn't you ever see any signs? And the person says, yes. So there are signs, but if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you become blind. You are blinded by your emotions. And then your life will be uh, a life of crying, of, of grudges. Why does he treat me like that? Why, does he, why, does he, why was he unfaithful to me? The answer is easy. Because he doesn't have the Holy Spirit. He never married God before he married you. And the other way also applies. It's not just men who betray these days, is it? There are women betraying. Pornography is betrayal. There's many ways of you betraying your spouse. So young people out there, it's a good thing you are still single. You can still be happy in love. So how does you marrying God first help you? Like I said, you, your vision of the person is different. You analyze, hold on a second. I like him, I think he's handsome. You know, he seems to be very active in the church. But let me look deeper, let me look closer. Holy Spirit, what do you see? This is if you have the Holy Spirit, okay? Look how important it is that you prioritize him. So if you have him, you will ask Holy Spirit, everything seems to be okay. All the boxes seem to be ticked, but what is it that I can't see that you can see? He will show you that he lies. It's a lie here and there. Or maybe he said, well, he doesn't um, honor his word. He says he will do something, but he doesn't. He's always late to his commitments that have to do with God. Can you see? There's no holiness. There's no regard for God. But he does everything in the church. Listen, to do is not the same as to be. Many of the things we do in the church, we could pay someone to do it. Have you ever thought about that? We could. But we do things in a different way when we are really born of God. We do things for God. So this is one of the main points. If you don't have the Holy Spirit yet, wait. Put everything on hold. Seek Him. You know, I was saying the other day to one of the girls who says, uh, who said, oh, I want to get married, you know, I want to be a pastor's wife and, you know, I really want to serve God on the altar. She was a little bit anxious about it. She was really, you know, that's, that's all she could think about. And I said to her, do you know what you should be doing right now? You should be dating God. And I know this sounds a bit religious to people who don't understand, but let me explain. What does it mean to date? It means to get to know. If you date God, you will marry him because you will find how wonderful he is. He understands you. He sacrificed for you. He saved you. He removed all the depression or whatever it is that you were going through before you came to church. He's everything. He's the best. And he will guide you. So the Holy Spirit shows you things that normal people cannot see. And 
Obviously, we spoke about those who don't have the Holy Spirit, but let me just quickly say something about those who do. What tends to happen with people who have the Holy Spirit? Okay, I have the Holy Spirit and I still had a bad relationship or a bad marriage. You ignore the signs because He showed it to you. If you are really humble and true to yourself, you will see that what I'm saying is true. So because you have the Holy Spirit, He showed you the signs, but you still decided to go ahead. So you don't want to live a life of regrets. The Holy Spirit is our safety. So even when you have Him, you still have emotions. This is how God built us, with emotions, so that we can be able to empathize with people, love people, understand people. Emotions are very important for us human beings. But there is a time and a place. Love life out. I need to first see if this is the right thing to do. Is this matching? Is this correct? Is this person really born of God? Mm, I saw that he behaved a certain way. He had a problem with a girl in the church. He was flirting. No, 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 no. Stop right there. Don't ignore the signs. Don't be led by your emotions because God will never force his will upon anybody. Look, look how much of a gentleman he is. How can you not love him? But I understand that for you to maybe understand what I'm trying to say is difficult because you've never had that experience. So through this video, I want to invite you to seek this new birth, the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Through this video, I want you to Start desiring this. Because the thing is, sometimes we hear this a lot among the youths. Well, I'm doing well, I don't live in sin, but I lack the, the strong desire. Do you know why? Because you don't yet understand his value. It's as simple as that. We are talking about love life, but the very most important thing, the most important thing even before love life is salvation if you don't have him you are not saved that should be enough for you to wow i need to pause everything else that i'm doing and focus on the holy spirit okay i'm not saying pause your studies all right please i'm saying pause everything else that's not important like love life if you don't have the Holy Spirit, love life is not important for you right now. Okay, let's look at the task of this week. Are you ready? Take note. Look what it says. Seek the first love of your life. Check to see who is in first place. And then it will be easy to discover if you've already found him or not. Because many people say, right, I have the Holy Spirit. But they don't because of the their reactions because of the fruits they bear, because of their behavior. You can tell. You know, for example, I can say to you, I have a six pack. But you can really say, or you can really see that I don't. Why? It's obvious. I would need to be a lot smaller, right? To have the six pack. So people say what they say, but show me the works. That's what counts, all right? I can say, oh, I love to go to the gym. All right, but if I'm overweight, hmm, do you really go to the gym? No, I don't, okay? So be careful. And then it says, make this love become fervent. Don't be in such a rush to enter your second marriage. Instead, Remember, second marriage is your boyfriend, all right? Because you should have your first marriage with him. Instead, dedicate yourself entirely to the first one. Love him. Delight yourself in his embrace, in his presence, in his care. Oh, what a delight, right? The, the author here is, is using these words and these expressions because she's thinking of how she feels when she's with her husband. Bishop Jr., right? So it's so nice to have someone to cuddle up with, to, to hug, to talk. 
you should have that with God first of all, okay? Then it says, love him with all your strength, with all your love. And what about the second marriage? It will happen when you least expect it. But your devotion to your first marriage must exist forever. Not even death can separate you from him. It is wonderful. Listen, as a married woman, and I usually share this with ladies who come for advice, I love my husband very, very much. We are really, truly, you know, one, okay? He's born of God, I'm born of God. Things just match, click, they just fit perfectly because we are both married to God before we married each other. But, you know, even me loving my husband so much, there are many things he doesn't understand. Sometimes I'll come and I talk to him about something that I feel or think, and he will be like, oh, it's okay, don't worry about it too much. He doesn't understand. And then the Holy Spirit quickly comes to my mind in a thought, you see, you should have come to me first because I understand what you're going through. I understand what you mean. So I've had many experiences like this over the 22 years of marriage. Don't get me wrong, I love my husband to bits, but he can never be number one in my life. All right? So with God, usually we say on the altar, isn't it? When you marry the person, you say, until death do us part. With God, there's no such a thing. It's that, that part of the vows doesn't exist because it's forever throughout life now, all the way through eternity. So look how earthly marriages are limited. Death sets you apart. And then with God, it, you will never be away from him. Okay. I hope this helps you. I hope this was clear enough. If you have any questions, please remember, email us. We are here to help. Okay? Join us for the next secret. God bless you all. Bye-bye.